Hello everyone, today we're going to go over Dior Holiday 2012 and though their offerings may not be the most unique, I have to say that their packaging this time around was quite impressive and though packaging is not important to everyone, this holiday you might even be sucked in just because of the glamorous old school feel that the retro packaging does have. First, we'll start with the nails because I will probably get a lot of questions about these. I already posted pictures on my Instagram. Again, my Instagram is Rayview, just like this channel. But the new Dior polishes come in this limited edition, very glamorous pot as opposed to a traditional bottle. And as you can see, my hands are opposing colors. So I've used the black and the white just so that I could show you guys both colors in one review. This one is called Lady. It actually doesn't apply as badly as I had anticipated that it would. It takes three careful, thin coats, and I recommend waiting for the coats to dry completely before applying the next one. But I do recommend after applying the third coat, apply a top coat very quickly. So I noticed that when, after I applied the third coat, I waited for one of my nails to dry completely, but then the top coat, which is Butter London's hardware, dragged a little bit and caused bubbling. And the next one is Diva which is probably the most popular of the shades. And I do think that this is a very appropriate offering for the season, just because gold is so festive, but it makes black a little bit more wearable and a little bit more party friendly. So this one, Diva 901, applies a little bit thicker, and I highly recommend using a thicker first coat and then a thinner second coat. And I do recommend these two. Diva is definitely easier to use, but Lady, as long as you're patient and you have a steady hand, I honestly don't see too many brush strokes. And also, it gets really hot when I film, especially with artificial light, as I'm doing today. So if I look a little sweaty, please forgive me. It's just boiling in my room right now. I have been wearing these polishes for about a week now and they have not chipped yet. So they do wear pretty well so I highly recommend you guys give them a try especially because they'll be a great addition to any nail polish collection. And though Lady is very similar to Chanel's Attraction, I don't have Chanel's Attraction so this was a great gift from my boyfriend which I really do appreciate. I love it. <laughs> now for the lipstick in Diva. So I initially purchased the Diva nail polish as well as the Diva lipstick just so that they could pair together. Diva was my favorite of the four. I think that Lady is probably the one that I would go back for just because it's a more rose red as opposed to a deep red like this, a true red. This one does run a little warmer on me than I expected. When swatched on my hand, and I will show picture swatches in a little bit, Diva tends to run a little bit more true to color. On my lips though, it does pull a little warmer. Going back to Lady, it's definitely a softer red, more wearable, very ladylike, but Marilyn, which I expected to be a little bit more true to Marilyn's red. My friend Guy of the Non Blonde thinks Marilyn and Diva's names should have been switched, which I do agree with because Marilyn did not really wear very pink reds. I still prefer, if you want a pink red, Chanel's Palpitante as opposed to the Marilyn, but if you like a thicker, creamier, slightly heavier lipstick formula, then you might like the Marilyn or any of these Diorific lipsticks. So generally, I always prefer Chanel lipsticks to Dior lipsticks, but I have to admit the Dior Fix have great texture, great lasting power, and they do stain slightly, but not overly so. And the stain doesn't fade unevenly, so I highly recommend you give these a try. I really love Diva, and I know I'll get a lot of wear out of it. Plus, it looks like a little bow when you set it down on its side, so I highly recommend you give these a try. Next, I have Fairy Golds, which I'm wearing on my eyes today. I wore it in my last video, which is a giveaway video for lipsticks. If you guys haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I will link it right here so you guys can enter the giveaway. I chose Fairy Golds, which is number 764, just because I already had the more dramatic version from last year, which is called Five Gold. And the new Night Golds is not quite as nice. It doesn't swatch well. There's mint black with gold glitter that just didn't translate too well on the eyes or on the back of my hand, and I think if you can track down a five golds, this was definitely more worth it.
I just found that because I already had five golds, purchasing fairy golds made a lot more sense just because it was a way for me to switch things up. So it almost reminds me a little bit of a more plummy version of Endless Shine. I love this neutral shade up here. It's like a mix of pink, peach, and nude, but very wearable, almost like a highlight. You can apply it to the brow bone if you like. Today I applied it to the front of my eye. But overall, I think this is a very wearable palette. I just wish the brown was slightly more pigmented, but on Very Fair Ladies, this is going to be a great everyday, not overly frosty or overly glittery quint. Now, my one issue with the two glitters here, the Cool Platinum as well as the Warmer Gold, they are a little flaky, so I do recommend using a primer like Max Paint Pot or Too Faced's Shadow Insurance with the, the Glitter Shadow Insurance, just to make sure that the glitter particles, excuse me, don't fall all over your face. But otherwise, I do think this is a gorgeous palette for women of all skin tones. It just depends on how natural you want your eye look to be. And I wore this look in my last video, not the red lips, just the eye look, exactly how I did it today. And a lot of you did ask for the tutorial, so I wore it the exact same way. I was just testing it out and to to see what worked, but apparently you guys did like this. And it's just a nice glowy eyeshadow look. I do really love it and I have worn it out several times now, so I think it just works well to elongate your eye shape if that's what you are looking for. And it's just a great holiday party look. So I really love this collection. I don't recommend night golds. I do recommend all of the nail polishes as long as you're willing to work with them. Do I really think that this collection was original? Not really, but the packaging was definitely unique unique and I think that the products are worth taking a look into just because I think this DRific lipstick formula is a little different and if you're looking for classics you can't go wrong with Dior. So now without any further ado let's get started with the tutorial. So for convenience sake because I'm already wearing foundation I'm not going to take it off instead I'm just going to show you what I am wearing. I'm wearing Burberry's sheer cover in number five with the new brow pencil that I've been obsessing over. This is Tom Ford's Brow Sculptor in Espresso. And I have concealed a couple blemishes here and there, but I haven't applied concealer to my under eye. So I'm going to begin by applying Painterly Paint Pot to my eyes. I'm just taking my ring finger and swiping it all the way over the lid. Then I'm going to take my Fairy Gold palette and using the nude color here, which is a pinky, slightly peach nude, I'm going to pick it up with a MAC 239 and I'm going to apply it all over the front of the lid, getting in, getting in the inner corner as well as slightly above my lid line. Then using a Sigma E35 tapered blending brush, I'm going to take the taupe with a slight purple tint down at the bottom corner. And using circular motions, I'm just going to slowly blend this on top of the lid as well as into the crease. And then use windshield wiper motions just to sculpt out that crease line. Then I'm going to take my T39 one more time and dip into the dark brown and go ahead and press it on the lower lid, right where your lid line is. Pushing it down and slightly out. Flipping the brush over, giving it a slight wing. Continue to blend in. So you want the shadow thickest in the corner here. And then thinner toward your inner tear duct. This brown is a little softer, so you're going to want to go over it and layer at least twice. Now, dipping back into the brown one last time with the MAC 239, just the tip, I'm going to open my eyes wide and just rim the outer corner of my eye with the brown. This will give your eyes an elongated look. Now I'm going to take a thin side of one of the applicators and pick up the gold, and I'm going to rim the inner corner blending into the dark brown on the lower lash line, flipping to the other side of the applicator and picking up the platinum in the center. It's more like a platinum silver actually. And then placing that right in the inner corner. Now for eyeliner, today I'm going to use Inglot's Matte Gel Liner in 90, which is a really dark brown, and I am loving Inglot liners. So just like we did with the eyeshadow, I'm going to keep it thin in the inner corner and thickest at the outer corner. Now 
winging it out of course. So now that the eyeliner is on, all we have left to do is apply mascara as well as false lashes. And today the false lashes that I plan to use are Ardell Demi Wispy. And then using Tarte's bronzer, I'm going to use my Sigma F25 tapered face brush and just apply my bronzer. I really love this bronzer because it's like my discontinued favorite Dior SPF 25 bronzer except this one doesn't have sunscreen but it's still matte and water resistant just like my Dior one so I highly recommend you check this one out if you don't necessarily love the new mineral formula. So that's just an option for you to keep in mind. Now you could apply blush but I'm just going to leave the skin alone since we're going to wear a red lip. I would just recommend using a more subtle blush. Of course, you could wear lip liner if you choose, but because this is a heavier lipstick formula, which is creamier, but with less slip, I don't think a lip liner is absolutely necessary. I do love how bright the lipstick is. I think it's gorgeous, and it is definitely my favorite of the four released this holiday. I think it corresponds pretty well with the Fairy Golds palette as well. I think it probably would have done best with Lady, but this does work. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It is really hot in here, which is why I may look a little sweaty on camera, but just the lighting is really difficult to control. So nonetheless, I hope you found the tutorial helpful and best of luck with all your Dior holiday 2012 shopping. Bye.